The 2015 Tour de France has seen so many new product launches that it would probably take us five minutes just to sit here and list them all. So, Kaylee Fretz from Velo News is going to help us sift through and find out the most important tech releases from this year. Okay, so first of all, the big manufacturers have all launched in pretty much with new frame sets this time. Aero being top of the list for what, three of them? Four yes. of them? Three of them, yeah. So, what are we looking at then? Well, the big two, Trek Specialized, sort of the uh, the two Goliaths, uh, at least in, in terms of marketing. Um, they each had one right before the tour. They both tested either at the Dauphiné or the Tour de Suisse. The new Venge from Specialized, the new Madone from Trek, and they actually, uh, they, they went after a lot of the same goals, a lot of integration. You don't see a single cable or a piece of housing on either one of those bikes. Now, both those bikes have got fully integrated brakes, haven't they? Now, there have been rumors certainly that you've heard that those brakes are not necessarily quite as good as the direct mount brakes that you know are on the market now. yeah you know both obviously shot for durace brakes which is sort of the, the gold standard at this point uh i had a, a very brief conversation with uh cavendish right before the tour started told me basically that he didn't like the brakes very much and that he would not use them in the mountain stages or when it rained and we've seen that to be true this first week he's, he's ridden his old venge most of the time um you know whether whether he gets pressured by specialized and maybe he's on that bike a little bit more we'll, we'll wait and see but he just he wasn't real excited about about the brakes i guess following a bad experience at the at nationals in the uk interesting with the scott uh now they've like all the other manufacturers have got an integrated bar and stem they reckon that saved you know two or three watts in the wind tunnel but neither of the scott sponsored teams here can actually use it can they because they're on well pro in oracle green edges case and richie, richie. in iron cycling's case so you know it's, it's funny that the they've got this aero bike but they don't get the full aero benefit yeah and that's the problem with well the problem and the benefit i guess of sponsorships you know if richie's paying you to use their bars you got to use their bars uh, and that's the advantage that trek has and specialized to some extent because they control the teams that they sponsor a little bit more closely but you know trek owns the entire team they own everything they it's their team so they just run full bond tracker equipment they run the same integrated uh bar stem on the madone um you know they don't they don't have sponsor problems like that you wonder why there aren't more aftermarket aero one-piece bar and stem combos out there if it's worth three watts you can stick on any frame and feel the benefit surely yeah i mean there are some but not a whole lot most of the time just just bars that you can attach to a stem and i think the gain there is pretty marginal so that you know the inability to to move the bars up and down, you know, to your own personal preferences is, is yeah. maybe too much of a hindrance for, for the mass market. Yeah, for me actually. Yeah, for much. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now moving away from Aero, Cannondale and Canyon have both released new lightweight bikes with a bit of Aero. Yeah, which seems to be a trend over the last couple of years. Um, I think it's mostly that you can't launch a bike anymore without using the word Aero in the press release at least, at least once. Uh, you know, Cannondale, they say aero, it's basically just smaller tubes. It's the same aero argument as, as a steel frame. Essentially, if you use small tubes, there's, there's less frontal area. Uh, the aero tweaks on that one are really pretty minimal. And, and that bike is designed for low weight and, and good ride quality. And um, you know, for your average cyclist out there uh, who doesn't care about the, the marginal gains, those kind of bikes are, are still probably more interesting. So, you know, the, the companies making aero frames, Trek and Specialized and all the rest, they all make another bike that, that sort of fits that mold as well. Something that we haven't seen at the Tour de France, obviously because they are still banned, is disc brakes. But we're getting close to the point in the season where the UCI said they would be allowing teams to experiment with them. Yeah. What have you been hearing? Uh, well, so yeah, they're, they're allowed to experiment actually pretty much right after the tour ends. Uh, and the big races on the calendar, those two months, August, September, uh, are in the US, which also uh, works well for the, the bike companies because the US has sort of embraced the disc movement a little bit quicker than Europe has. Are the teams ready for it? Because there's a huge amount of infrastructure to put in place for those, isn't there? There is, yeah. And, and some of the teams are definitely ready for it. It all depends on the, on the bike sponsor at that point and the wheel sponsor. Or so, the group that sponsor, Campagnolo teams. Yeah, Campagnolo teams will probably not be testing anything, although they are there is a disc system from Campagnolo in development. Uh, we just don't know when it's going to be released. Do we know anything about it? It has rotors and hydraulics and 
Oh, hydraulic. <laughs> well, yeah, hydraulic. That's good news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we think it's a we think it's a, a collaboration with Formula, which which they've done some of that before. Yeah. Um, two Italian companies seems to work well. Uh, yeah. So like, I know that Cannondale has been working on it. They might be on the Synapse, which they already sell with disc brakes, which is their sort of Roubaix cobble frame. Uh, I talked to a Mavic representative about a month and a half ago, and uh, they are starting to prepare neutral disc wheels, neutral service disc wheels, um, which I believe the Pro Challenge has Mavic neutral service, so But with what axles? There. That's the big question. The, um, the industry standard is going to be 140 by 12, 142 by 12. Uh, that is sort of the, de the decided standard, and that's basically led by Shimano. Uh, Shimano has essentially decided that that's what they want to go with, and that's what they're going to go with. So for the consumer now, if you're buying a disc bike, that should be yeah. The 12 mil, 12 mil through axle is what you want to buy. That's at least for the foreseeable future. That is going to be what's that's pretty important. Yeah, that's going to be what's available because there's still quite a few bikes out there that are that are not that. No. Nope. Yeah, there's sort of there has uh, been some sort of transition period, um, but that is where it's going. Like I said, Shimano has decided that that's what they're going to do. Got that, and then the Shimano Direct mount, which is a different mount on, uh, for the brake itself for the brake caliper. Uh, I believe that will probably take over the next couple of years as well. It's a much smaller, um, more compact, sort of better looking version for, for road bikes in particular. Uh, if you're buying a disc bike, look for those two things. Direct, uh, the, the, the... Flat mount? Flat mount, thank you. <laughs> flat mount Shimano uh, and the 12 mil through axle. Yeah, interesting that uh, two real big wigs from Shimano were here today snooping around, snooping around. Their, their own teams, <laughs> Sky and BMC, but they're on the ground, new stuff in the pipeline. Yeah, well, allegedly. there's always new stuff in the pipeline from those guys, uh, although we don't tend to, to hear about it or see it uh, until it actually shows up. We occasionally get wind of it via you know, patent applications and things like that, but they Shimano patents an awful lot of stuff they don't mm -hmm. end up ever actually making, so that's a tough, uh, it's a tough crystal ball to read. Right, well, thanks so much for joining us, Kaylee. I'm sorry we could only give you water this time as opposed to anything, uh, you know, a bit more appropriate for our location. But anyway, that's been absolutely fascinating. If you want to see more from Kaylee from uh, the past couple of seasons, then you can click up there and get through to Kaylee's very own GCN playlist where we get all his insights in one handy place. Or for more Tour de France content, then you click down there and you get straight through. Thanks for our Tour de France playlist right there. Otherwise, do you know what happens at this point? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm just staring at the camera. Well, that's fine. <laughs> this is the point at which we encourage people to subscribe to GCN. If they wow. don't already, which you should do, then uh, mm. click on Kaylee and uh, you can subscribe to GCN, just like that.